Most tornadoes come and go in minutes, but a few become monsters. Out of thousands of US twisters, less than 0.6% reach EF4 strength, and an even rarer 0.14% ascend into the realm of the EF5, nature's most violent fury. These aren't just storms, they shred cities, twist steel like paper, and erase entire neighborhoods from the map. And when they come, there's often no warning, just a low rumble that turns into hell on earth. In this video, we uncover the five most devastating tornadoes in American history. These storms didn't just break records, they changed everything. On a spring afternoon, a massive twister touched down in Missouri and tore northeast through Illinois into Indiana. The Tri-State Tornado remains the deadliest single tornado in U.S. history. It was retroactively rated F5 and carved a continuous damage path about 219 miles long. Its vortex averaged around three quarters of a mile wide, obliterated our entire towns in mere minutes. The storm killed 695 people and injured about 2,027. Roughly 15,000 homes were destroyed, and countless buildings, schools, and farms were leveled. One survivor remembered, We all slipped, or slid. If it hadn't been for the seats, it would have been like a sliding out the door. By modern analysis, the tri-state tornado's path appears to have been one continuous supercell, lasting over three and a half hours. Researchers still debate whether it was literally a single, long-lived funnel or a family of tornadoes spawned by a cyclic thunderstorm. In any case, over 219 miles of devastation were recorded. The legacy of Tri-State is profound. It prompted later generations to ask, how might improved warnings have reduced its toll? Tri-State remains a benchmark for tornado catastrophe. Decades later, a violent F5 tornado struck the suburbs of Oklahoma City. On May 3, 1999, the Bridge Creek Moore tornado developed outside Bridge Creek, then rampaged east through Moore and into Oklahoma City. This tornado registered the highest wind speed ever measured. Mobile Doppler radar clocked winds up to 321 miles per hour inside the funnel. It stayed on the ground for about 38 miles in just 85 minutes. The destruction was immense. 36 people were killed and about 583 were injured. Over 8,000 homes and many businesses were damaged or destroyed. Total losses reached around $1 billion. In the wake of the storm, the National Weather Service issued the first ever tornado emergency alert, an urgent warning that catastrophic damage was expected. This reflected not only the tornado's unprecedented power, but also the dense population in its path. Bridge Creek Moore also taught forecasters a great deal about extreme storms. Its terrifying winds made clear even the EF5 rating was not an upper bound. Survivors and chasers captured footage of multiple sub-vortices and flying debris, underscoring how these violent twisters really operate. In short, the 1999 Moore Storm or set the record books. It killed dozens, leveled entire neighborhoods, and yielded the first tornado emergency in weather history. There it is. Oh my god, it's right there. Right behind us, four, three o'clock. On a warm late spring day, a deadly tornado struck Joplin. The Joplin tornado was a multiple vortex EF5. It touched down just west of the city at 5.34 p.m. CDT and raced through Joplin for about 21.6 miles. At peak, it was nearly one mile wide, with estimated winds up to 250 miles per hour. This monster wreaked catastrophic damage. In an instant, an estimated 4,380 houses and 8,000 buildings on you were destroyed, including hospitals, schools, and the very heart of the city. 
The official death toll was 158 people. About 1,150 more were wounded. The financial cost reached $2.8 billion, making it the sneak costliest while lost tornado in US history. Joplin's loss of life was especially tragic. Such a high toll hadn't occurred since 1947. In the aftermath, President Obama toured the city and met with victims. FEMA even coined the tongue-in-cheek Waffle House Index after Joplin, a measure of disaster response readiness. The tornado's fury led planners to rebuild stronger, safe rooms, and warning sirens became priorities. Meteorologically, Joplin underscored how a single thunderstorm can spawn an utterly devastating EF-5. Its scars are still visible today. Entire neighborhoods took years to rebuild, leaving behind a legacy of resilience. Wow. Roar. Huge debris. Huge debris. Remarkably, just two days after Joplin, another EF-5 tornado hit Moore, Oklahoma, the same area battered back in 1999. On May 20th, the Moore tornado roared through suburbs at about 46 miles per hour, cutting a 17-mile path. It was about 1.3 miles wide at its largest, with estimated peak winds around 210 miles per hour. Like many more storms, it struck well-built schools. Two elementary schools were destroyed, fortunately when classes were not in session. The tornado leveled about 1,150 homes. In total, 23 people died and roughly 377 were injured. Property damage was estimated near $2 billion. Moore's 2013 tornado was one of the last EF-5s on record. Its rapid movement and high intensity overwhelmed local shelters, a stark reminder that even with warnings, danger can arrive fast. Following the event, Oklahoma tightened building codes in tornado-prone areas, especially for schools and hospitals. The 2013 Moore tornado also reinforced lessons from 1999. A significant tornado in a metro area remains a mortal threat. Ten days after Moore, another Oklahoma tornado set grim records. The El Reno tornado near Yukon and El Reno was officially rated EF3 on post-storm surveys, but it was far from ordinary. Mobile radar instruments measured winds over 313 miles per hour within its core among the highest ever observed on Earth. As it swept east, the tornado expanded to a staggering 2.6 miles wide, making it the largest Oz tornado on record. It remained on the ground for about 16.2 miles. Amazingly, it crossed mostly open country, so it struck few structures. Still, it killed eight people, including four well-known storm chasers, and injured 151. Some chasers were literally thrown from vehicles by violent subvortices. The El Reno storm's legacy is both scientific and more human. Meteorologists studied its multiple vortex structure and erratic path for years. The National Weather Service called it the most dangerous tornado in storm-observing history because of its immense size and the deaths of expert chasers. It taught forecasters and storm spotters a grim lesson. A tornado can behave unpredictably and strike even seasoned observers. In short, El Reno 2013 was not the deadliest by casualties, but it was one of the most unique Squamayan mine intensely powerful storms ever measured. These five tornadoes span nearly a century, but they share a terrifying common thread, sheer ferocity. Each storm was an extreme outlier, by any measure. Only about 0.6% of tornadoes are rated EF4 or EF5, and merely 0.14% become EF5. Yet within those tiny odds, nature can still unleash hell. The legacy of these storms is twofold. First, they spurred improvements in forecasting, warnings, and building safety. The continuous tri-state path helped drive research on supercell cycles. The 1999 outbreak introduced the I tornado emergency busic concept, and storms like Joplin and Moore prompted stronger shelters and better preparedness. 
Second, these disasters enter the cultural memory as warnings. They remind us to respect severe weather. Scientists continue to study them for clues on tornado physics and possible climate links. Above all, these storms reinforce a simple truth. Warning saves lives. Modern radar and alerts mean today's similar tornado would likely kill far fewer people. But as long as Tornado Alley exists, the potential for an unprecedented storm remains. By remembering the Tri-State, Bridge Creek, Joplin, Moore, and El Reno tornadoes, we honor their victims and learn to prepare for whatever nature throws our way.